you some SIS laboratory. For those who are first-timers, especially for kitchen essentials, it's very important we have certain protocol in the laboratory. Okay, so once you enter the lab, there is what we call no laboratory if there is no uniform. So no uniform, no laboratory. Why do we have to have a complete uniform? We have a toque. Usually you also have a hairnet and then you have a toque or a cup. You have a chef uniform. You have a clog shoes. Okay. Why do you think you are supposed to have this kind of a setup? The toque or the hairnet uh, or a cup will protect your hair, your head from heat. It's also to avoid uh, falling off hair on the food. You have a chef uniform. Why do you have a chef uniform that is double breasted? You have to cover especially this part and especially for the male, the lower part. So, we also have an apron. It's to protect our body from the heat, okay? Too much heat on the stove or an oven while you are cooking. Why should you also have a clog shoes? The clog shoes will actually protect your feet. And it's also to avoid slips in the kitchen. It is for protection. If you have your risk management, it is also to avoid the risk of accidents of fire or even heat or even scalding okay uh, while cooking why should you also have a long sleeves uniform okay this uniform the arms actually is supposed to be protected also from heat that's why it has to be long not short okay being a chef is earned you don't just call yourself a chef if you have not been a restaurateur or a cook or one who helps in the kitchen or one who bakes because once you finish studying you don't just call yourself a chef this is earned you have to work so hard and you have to give your skills your creativity while you are cooking today is our first day so basically what's the most important thing is to know our tools and equipments in the kitchen it is not necessary that you have to have complete equipment, but it's also how you can be creative with the use of your um, maximized equipment and tools you have at home. Okay, so we have our laboratory. Okay. So in the laboratory, we have our working tables. Our working tables are supposed to be clean as you enter. So when you leave the laboratory, it has to be the same thing. It has to be clean. Even the floor has to be dry. Okay. So basic is to have a working table. We have our refrigerator. Okay. We also have our freezer. Okay. So this is where you store your food or your ingredients just in case you're not going to use all of this. What is very important in your laboratory is, of course, the fire extinguisher. So in our risk management subject, it's also very important that we know how to use this in case of emergency. We have also our exhaust fans. So we click this, okay, the green one, to put it on, okay, and off the red one. This is just in case you are already frying and you don't like to smell like, you know, ginisang bawang, okay, or fried fish as you exit the laboratory, it's to remove uh, that smell. So our exhaust fans are here, okay, so this is our exhaust fan, and you can also open the light just in case you need the light. Okay, we have our oven, we have different kinds of oven, okay. So later, as we proceed, you will know what are the different kinds of ovens. This kind of oven is an old oven where you have to put the fire below and the heat goes round. Okay? We have other ovens also where it is electric and it is gas. So it will depend on what kind of oven you are going to use. Okay. What is very 
important in the kitchen is how you dispose your waste. We have here biodegradable. Okay, what is biodegradable? And non-biodegradable. So we have nabubulok at hindi nabubulok. Ano ang itatapon natin sa nabubulok? So we have here the tins of the vegetables. You have also waste food. And you have, of course, uh, let's say paper, the shells of the eggs. You can place it here. The non-biodegradable, hindi nabubulok, ibig sabihin, ang itatapon nyo dito ay lata, okay, plastic, whatever things that uh, it's not going to be or it's going to have a difficulty in a decomposition, so you have the non-biodegradable or hindi nabubulok. Okay, so these are very important because in Baguio City, if you do not segregate your waste, they will not also collect it. So it is very, very important. These are very basic. This is also helping our Mother Earth. Okay. So we also have, of course, our dishwashing area, our sink. Okay. So we have, of course, our sink. We have here water and we also have here the coal. So, with our cold water, okay, you can see this is also to remove the grease. Why do you have to use warm or hot water in cleaning or washing your dishes? Because it's very important that, that you don't, um, the oil is that go inside your sink. It is again helping Mother Earth. Okay. Of course, the most important thing in the kitchen is your stove. Okay, our stove here has four burners. So in the four burners, it will depend how you will use it. Okay, so it's possible that at home, you don't have a gas burner. You have maybe an electric burner or you are using wood or you're using charcoal. It doesn't matter what is important. You can cook your food. Okay, so maybe you can also use paper for cooking your food if that's the way you cook your food so there are different ways on how to create heat so that you can cook your food okay basic of course is your pans which you are going to use okay so we have here our first one which is called sauce pan this is where you commonly cook your sauce okay the most important in the kitchen is your frying pan okay um, we have different kinds of methods of frying, deep fry, shallow fry, pan fry. So later, especially for kitchen essentials, there are different terms in frying, which is already in your module. Next, you have, of course, your casserole. The casserole is where you're supposed to cook the different dishes with, of course, if you need to have uh, stock, or sauce or for alimbawa, watery um, kinds of dishes okay next the most important is your mise en place container so what is a mise en place container a mise en place container is where you prepare for example you're going to saute meat you have your garlic you have your onion you have to prepare so you prepare all your ingredients so when i tell you mise en place so you have to prepare a mise en plat. You have to place these ingredients in your mise en plat bowls. Okay. So what is the mise en plat bowls? These are small containers where you are supposed to place your ingredients. Okay. This is the one. So maybe you can place your garlic here onion or your tomato it has already been prepared and sliced so that when you go to your stove or work cooking area it's very easy everything is already there you just simply have to place it if it has already been pre-prepared okay we also have here our mixing bowls okay our mixing bowls where you're supposed to mix whatever ingredients you're supposed to place before you cook your food. Again, in some recipes, you need to have a measuring cup. Okay. When you say 
a measuring cup. These are already standard. Okay? It's a been measured. If your recipe will say one tablespoon, one cup, do not use an ordinary cup. You have to use a calibrated measuring cup. So, for example, I'm going to use flour. I don't have to press it. What I have to do is to level off the flour so it's going to be exact. Even measurement of water or anything because there are some recipes where you have exact measurements. So these are your measuring cups and these are your measuring spoons. Okay, so there are different ways but it will depend for some experts they don't measure anymore. But in baking, it is very, very important to measure all your ingredients. Again, I repeat, this is your mise en place bowls. This is your mixing bowls. This is your measuring cup. And you have your measuring spoon. Okay. Next. You have, of course, your teaspoon. Okay your tablespoon and you have your fork of course you want to taste the food you have to use these kinds of utensils of course we have a lava okay. we also have here um we call this a fish plate okay or a serving plate we have two kinds of sizes okay and next of course our different kinds of plates Later, if we given the chance, our class is going to be face to face. You have to use these kinds of equipments. If you have one group, one group will have to manage all the equipment that is given to them. Okay. So these are the different sizes of plates that you have, and you're going to use in the future, depending on what you need. Of course, this is a set of three. So we have our plates. As I mentioned earlier, this is our serving platter. Okay, we have a medium size and a big size or a large size. We have, of course, our salad plates. We have our bread and butter plate. Okay, and we have our dessert plates. The most important, of course, is your dinner plate. Okay, these are all heavy. Okay, place and these are standard place that you are using in the industry. So you have to get used to using these kinds of plates. Of course, one that is very basic and we can use for, you know, our rinds or ju I mean, grated cheese. We have grated carrots. Okay, so we can use the grater. Okay. We also have our clever. Okay. Of course, if you would like to sharpen this, we have our sharpening steel. This is what we use. Okay, our knives. We have three sets of your knives that you're using in the kitchen. We have a turner. A turner that's used to turn, of course, your case. Or maybe if you're making scrambled eggs. We have a soup ladle. Okay. We have also our wooden spoon. We have a flat one and one that you can use for cooking um, or turning your dishes. Okay, we have two kinds of tongue, one big and one small. We have a wire whisk. Okay, and one is we have here a kind of a scissors that can be used for different functions. Okay, it can be a scissor, a can opener, one that can also open um, nuts, and a bottle or, yeah, bottle opener. So this can be used multifunctional kind of scissors. Understand you have different kinds of chopping boards. Why do we have to observe the use and the right kind of color of chopping boards in the kitchen? The blue. Of course, it's used for fish. Okay, so very basic. Why should you have different kinds of colors to avoid food contamination? If you're going to chop here onions, 
and you're going to chop here for example your potatoes and you're going to chop here bread there is a possibility that you're going to contaminate contaminate the food so basic use the right kind of chopping board for the right kind of food this is for seafoods and fish the green of course basic is used for vegetables okay and this one the brown is used for meat um we have the white one but it's not here now the white one is actually used for bread what is important i'm sure at home you'd only have one kind of chopping board you either have one white or just a piece of wood chopping board what is important there is you don't contaminate the food it is okay if you have only one kind of chopping board as long as you chop for example here onion wash the chopping board and use it again for another item wash it again and then use it for another item if you have only one kind of chopping board at home to avoid food contamination we have different kinds of equipments that might not be found in your cabinet for the kitchen so you need to request okay if you're going to cook and you need certain special equipments for the kitchen then definitely you have to request to the custodian this is a protocol for St. Louis University okay for safety because each item of this is our accountability and you've also paid this in your laboratories okay so this is what you call a pasta maker if you wish to make pasta um, linguine or maybe other kinds of pasta or making you're going to make a lasagna pasta then definitely you can use this is called a manual pasta maker okay so if I would like to bake the lasagna definitely I need to have a pan we have different sizes of pans and you need this pan if you're going to cook in the oven so this is a square pan we have a round pan we also have rectangular pan we have triangular pan but it will depend on what you're going to cook we also have pie pans which maybe i can show you later okay <clears throat> of course we have here a masher if you're going to make mashed potatoes if you are going to make also let's say your pasta you can drain it from this okay you can, instead of this, you can also use a colander. This colander can be used for vegetables, training pasta, noodles, or any other kind of fruits or vegetables you wish to wash. So you use this colander. Okay. This is a turbo broiler. Okay. It's very important that you know how to use these kinds of equipment. If you don't know how to use it, please ask your teacher or ask the guy of your custodian because at times this is made of glass it's placed there caution hot surface and you're not supposed to wash this when it is hot because it's glass and it's going to break if it's hot and you pour cold water the heat of the turbo is on top here and you simply have um, to control the temperature here in the timer these are very basic things that you need to know and if you need help of course ask help from your teacher the heat of a turbo only comes from the top unlike the oven you have the heat which goes up and down okay so next we also have here our non-stick pan okay which is very basic non-stick you're not supposed to scrape this with um, a steel wool or hard items because you're going to destroy the non-stick pan so careful in the uses of this that whatever you cook should not be burned okay we also have here a mallet of course you would like to tenderize or soften your meat or you're going to make cordon bleu or pork or beef but you want it to be tender so you need to use this the mallet okay we also have here a brush for placing oil we also have here a pizza cutter okay another one is we have here a steamer okay the steamer is usually used for making chocolates 
and one of my favorites is making chocolates and if you specialize in making chocolates you are called a chocolatier okay so you simply have to place water here and you can place now your chocolates here or maybe you would like to make mallows for your fondant you place your mallows here for your double boiler you see the difference of your double boiler and your steamer they both has water inside this is water inside okay so this is used for chocolates but this is used for steam foods so what if I'm going to cook now? Puto, shopao, shomai, I can use this. Or I'm going to make embutido. So I use my steamer. Okay. Again, we have here two kinds of spatula. We have our metal spatula and we have our rubber spatula. This is for scraping things that you have in your pan or your mixing bowl if you would like to use it. But this one is also used for baking or for leveling off or for other things that is for baking that you would like to use or to lift up things that you have to cook. Okay. We have also here um, for frying and you would like to remove the oil of whatever you are cooking so it can drip from here. We have here a ramekin, two sizes of ramekin if you're going to make creme brulee. So you bake this, okay? But later, anyway, in the book that I gave you in the module, you have there the procedures on how to use this and proper way of using this in the oven, okay? You can also use this for desserts. We have here a rolling pin to flatten whatever you need uh, for the kitchen. If you will also be making dough or pasta, we have here an ice cream scooper. Okay, we have here a peeler. We also have here our weighing scale. If there will be ingredients that you need in your recipe book, it says grams. Okay, so you're going to use a weighing scale. Next, we have a funnel, or we call this. Ilocano Embudo, which be um, later I will be uh, explaining this. We have also here leche flan molder, okay, in Ilocano or in Tagalog we call this Lialera. We have also here a waves, I mean a measuring cup. It's a measuring cup for liquid. So what is the purpose of using this? You can actually see that if you're going to read this it has to be at eye level this is a measuring okay we have also here for those who are enrolled in food styling where you can place your sauce for decorations okay if you're going to use a blender we have of course our blender okay our blender it's again very basic very important you know how to use this Please, every time you use this blender, do not turn it. Once you start to turn this, the screw under is going to loosen. So you simply have to use it, place it there, and that's it. Okay? Avoid placing this in the socket and placing your hand or a spoon or a fork inside. This is also made of glass. So if you're going to place here something that is warm, please do not wash this immediately in cold water. Again, very basic instructions, okay? This is made out of glass. Of course, you have to have the pulse here. It will depend on how fine you need for the ingredients that you're going to use. Again, there is a cover. Always place the cover to avoid accidents and spillage. Okay. We have also different kinds of knives here. This is a serrated knife. This can be used for breads. Okay. So, serrated knife for cakes. This is a fillet knife. This is very soft. This is very easy and nice for fish. Because later on, for kitchen essentials, you will also be filleting some fish which I will be demonstrating, which is part of your module. Of course, knives like this that I also use for meat, 
very important to use the right kind of knife in the kitchen. Remember, as a chef, your um, your best tool in the kitchen is your knives. Okay. We have different pans that we can use. This is used for putu, putu molder, or maybe kuchinta molder. Okay. We have this for tart. We have here also an egg slicer. If you want the hard boiled eggs and you would like to have fine slices, uniform slices, then you use the egg slicer. Okay. We have here now a sauce um, container for your sauce, uh, especially for those who are involved in your food styling. Okay. One important tool in the kitchen is a thermometer. What if I'm cooking, let's say, uh, turkey? Buo. Yung turkey na niluluto ko. Ilalagay ko ngayon yung turbo. How will I be able to check if the inside part of the turkey is cooked? So I need to place this. And this thermometer will now move and show us what is the temperature or if the food in uh, the turkey is cooked or not. So you have your turkey, lamb, beef, pork, you have veal. If you would like to have your meat medio rare or well done. Okay, but that will be another topic later. Okay, another tool that you have here is your uh, electric mixer. Of course, in baking, we have our kitchen A. It's uh, for baking, but this one is just very basic for your kitchen. If you don't have this at home, please use a wire whisk, or maybe you can use just a leaf fork to make it very rigid. Okay, we have here a mortar and pestle for chopping whatever ingredients you need for the kitchen. Of course, we have our strainer. We also have here a pizza pan. And of course, if you're going to make muffins later, during the finals, okay, you will be baking, you will be making different kinds of desserts. So basically, you need this kind of um, cupcake molders. In some kitchens, we have different kinds of knives. As I mentioned earlier, your tool, the most favorite and the most important tool in the kitchen for a chef is your knife. And uh, the first laboratory that you will have for kitchen essentials is how to do cuts and slices. And that's going to be next week. So it is very important if you have a knife that is good, okay, and you start uh, using the a sharpening steel, you can use this, of course, but if you don't have this at home, definitely you can have this, it's a stone, okay? But of course, it's just to sharpen your knife, okay? Again, if you're slicing, sabi ko nga sa mga estudyante ko, kung makurol yung kutsilyo, nasusugatan ka. Kung matulis yung kutsilyo, hindi ka masusugatan kapag nag-slice ka. And that's going to be next week. For just for today, we have all the equipments, the tools that you have in the kitchen, and I do hope you have learned. Thank you so much, and see you next week.